Next up, we have accelerating fuzzing through prefix guided execution, and we have Xiaohua Li, who is going to present. And this is also a distinguished paper award, so uh, congratulations for that. Okay, um, thank you for the nice intro. So, hello everyone. My name is Shao Hua, Shao Hua Li. I'm from ETH Zurich, I'm a PhD student. And this is a joint work with my supervisor, Zheng Dongsu. And this work is about accelerate fuzzing through the new concept called uh, prefix guided execution. So, first of all, what is fuzzing? So, for a fuzzer and you give it a target you give it a target program, the father generate uh, input, fit it to the target program, and execute it on this, in, uh, on this input, and at the end it collects some information from the execution to decide if this input is interesting or not. And a typical like, a feedback would be the coverage, like if this execution or the input trigger uh, improved the coverage or not. And the, the goal of fuzzing is to find a box, and in order to do so, the fuzzer try to maximize the code coverage, and uh, in order to maximize the coverage, it tries to find all the coverage in increasing inputs um, from all the inputs in the generated during, during fuzzing. So the problem. Suppose on the right hand side is some control flow graph of some uh, non-trivial program, and the father generated some input and fit it into the program and uh, execute it step by step. So by step, let's see, execute uh, one basic block, or one code edge, and uh, execute it from one basic block to another one, and until after executed so many steps, it finally returns something. And the end of the execution, the father can check, okay, if this, uh, cover, if this execution is indeed interesting or not. So let me, let me use this uh, simplification to denote this, is, this is like a programming execution. And um, after this execution, this execution takes some time, and at the end of the execution, the, pro the father can, okay, finally know, okay, this input is not interesting, but time has wasted, right? So that means, that means like, um, um, the father, during fuzzing, the fuzzers will generate a tons of inputs for the target program, and uh, often the time that it generates tens of millions, sec millions of uh, inputs for an hour or for the day. And uh, for each of the input, it try to execute it, and uh, to test if it in increase coverage, execute it, so on and so forth. So forth. But the truth is, um, although it generates so many inputs, only a tiny fraction of them are truly interesting and required for execution. So that means among all the inputs generated by fuzzers, only a very small fraction of them are truly interesting and they require for execution. And the father, however, wastes most of the time on the rest of you know, in, in, uh, interesting inputs. So in this work, our target is trying to accelerate this process. So the new concept that we call prefix guided execution. So let me first introduce some uh, like conceptual solution to this uh, problem. So let me see, like, um, instead of uh, fully execute the program, because our purpose here is to find out if an input is increased the coverage. So instead of uh, fully execute the program, we're trying to partially execute the program and trying to use the so-called partially execute the program and try to use the so-called execution prefix to infer whether or not this, uh, this, like, uh, this execution is likely to you know, trigger, improve the code coverage or not. And let me use a simple example to illustrate this, uh, this idea, that uh, for input, we executed for a certain amount of inputs, and we pause the execution at some, uh, at some point, uh, at some point. And we then check um, from the information we get from, uh, during the uh, prefix execution to see if this execution is, seems to be um, promising. So if the, it is, then we resume the execution and uh, reach it and uh, continue the execution until reach the end and ask the father to check for the information it needs. And if the check indicates that, okay, this is not interesting, this execution is um, not interesting at all, then we 
apply early termination to this execution and continue on the next input instead of you know with time on it and pause it again check it again and and we hopefully oh, hopefully we can find the approach that is that our uh, execution prefix can accurately identify those really interesting um, inputs um, that means given all the all the generator generated inputs and the small amount of uh, coverage. This approach can narrow down the space to those like to those like uh, coverage uh, increase inputs, and uh, for the rest of the uh, uninteresting inputs, it try to cut them off. And uh, so in this way, it can accelerate this uh, this approach. So the question is uh, here: Okay, after all this talk, what is uh, what is a good execution prefix for this for this purpose? So we find out that the sequence of executed basic block, basic block ID could be one interesting and pre uh, um, quite effective uh, um, execution prefix. And if you want to know how we find that out, you can re we refer to our paper because we have a, a lot of ex uh, interesting like evaluation, a, ton, a tons of evaluation to find this out. So let me give you the jump directly to the concrete execution we implemented in the current phase. So let's suppose this is a, a, a toy example, and this f function takes two inputs, two integer, and they, after some execution, it returns something. So you don't have to understand the semantics of this execution. And on the left hand side, it's uh, the the num is uh, the row is a uh, line number, or you can in this uh, for the ease uh, of the presentation, we denote them as a basic block ID, as I just introduced before. So. We define some prefix lines. Let's see, prefix lines six to four. That means we will only execute the four steps of this of this uh, program. And give an input, the first input, one zero, we fit it to the program, and we execute it one by one, one step by one step. Then we execute the line two, line three, line six, and line nine. And then we pause it to check if this is truly interesting. And in this case, we would check if this sequence is unique or not. That means if we have seen this execution prefix before or not. In this case, this is the first uh, execution prefix. So we think, OK, this is interesting, and we continue the execution to the, until the program terminates. And uh, for the next one, and again, we, we pause the execution at a certain prefix, uh, prefix length and check, OK, this is still interesting, because it's two, three, six, uh, seven sequences and is unique to us, and we continue the execution. And for and for the next one, okay, two, three, six, nine is uh, like it has been. It's not interesting because it has been observed before. So we drop this, uh, like uh, terminate this execution, and so on and so forth. At the end, we hopefully we can only execute a small portion of the inputs that um, are truly interesting with truly interesting prefix. Um, so the length of the length of the prefix has a, a huge impact because suppose this is a long execution. If the execution prefix, you can define to, 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 to for example, infinity, then it would be equivalent to your full execution length. It would be super precise that you can capture all the interesting inputs, but it's okay, it's not interest, it's not an effective approach because you also waste the same amount of time as before. So on the other hand, you can also define a very small uh, a small length of the prefix, and but this would be less precise, and you can miss a lot of things. So in the implementation, you should uh, trade a, a, a good balance between these two. And uh, in the, in this work, we propose some um, dynamic uh, search algorithm that uh, can search for a good balance between these two. So the evaluation. So after all, we need to know if this truly work. Okay. So we use a magma benchmark, which uh, consists of uh, 21 uh, reward programs, including some uh, really famous ones like uh, the PNG, uh, LibXML, and OpenSSL, etc. And we apply this uh, for um, two days of fuzzing on each of the program using existing uh, the most famous fuzzer, AFL and AFL++, and uh, here's the result. First of all, the throughput, that means uh, among all the executed, um, uh, the, the, the number of inputs that it are truly, that are explored by the fuzzer. So the solid bars are the results of our uh, prefix guided execution. 
and the shaded bars are the um, other basic uh, Lexi AFL. And you can see that we can accelerate uh, the, the number of inputs ex explored by faster a lot, up to like um, uh, three times more. And uh, the x axis represents uh, is a parameter to 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 tell tell the PGE to search for a a, a trade off of the of the prefix length. And uh, with longer prefix prefix length, it you will have you know less accelerations. And with less uh, with a smaller prefix length, you can have a huge improvement. But always comes with some cost. And uh, the box, okay, this is the ultimate goal of of, of fuzzer. So interestingly, we find a lot of um, a lot of more bugs than the vanilla AFL because we just accelerated this who process a lot. And uh, but sometimes we miss some bugs. Why? Because we don't have formal guarantee to this. We cannot guarantee that all the interesting executions they will indeed have interesting. Um, execution prefix. We just do a lot of uh, evaluation to evaluate this hypothesis and we find out that, okay, for 99% of the time this is indeed the case. And But uh, in practice there should be more like instantiation of this idea. And um, Yes, more bugs, and for the achieved uh, for the achieved uh, coverage that uh, you can um, like improve the coverage um, at all programs, just because we explored more bugs, three times, four times bugs. And some open questions to this problem. First of all, this is uh, in this um, in this work we position the prefix guided execution as a new concept of how you should look at the fuzzing the fuzzing process. That is, you don't have to waste the same amount of time on all the inputs you generated, and you should uh, use a use a unique use some uh, like a prefix uh, execution to prioritize all the inputs you generated, and because. During partial ex uh, execution, it can give you more information rather than just based on the input uh, like uh, itself. And uh, we and uh, for the current execution uh, prefix execution prefix, prefix we explored, we step out the baby step that is use the simplest version that we can find to 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 um, to apply it to the current faster. And in practice, you can use more precise information. For example, the memory states, because ultimately the ex the program execution is the transactions sequence of program states. And along this way, there are tons of information you can collect. Okay, And the final execution property is only one tiny property you want to know. For example, coverage interesting, uh, coverage increasing or not, or bug triggering or not. And uh, but uh, there are tons of uh, like uh, information you can get from these from the um, pro program uh, states transactions. And for sure, for this current instantiation, we don't ha provide any formal guarantee. But maybe in the future, you can use static analysis to provide to cut down the control flow graph to provide a more um, formal guarantee. But yet, our current baby step, you know, is practical because it's super fast and it can like uh, can easily integrate it to the, all the current uh, like implementation of gray box fuzzes. And we have shown the promising results on that. And in conclusion, in this paper, we provide a new perspective of inferring the whole execution property based on the partial execution. And uh, for this um, partial execution, we use uh, simply the execution, basic uh, the, 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 the index of them, that is the unique ID of them. We don't, use, we, we don't uh, explore the further rich information, such as the memory states or, or, or variable values along this way. And uh, we envision this uh, this uh, new concept of like prefix guided execution can also um, um, benefit a lot of um, um, downstream uh, downstream tasks. And okay, finally, some shameless introduction. I'm on the job uh, academic job market now, and I'm Shaohua from ATH Zurich and work on undefined behaviors and the compiler correctness. And uh, if you're interested, you can reach out to me. The end. Uh, in your 
what happened to the loop when you have t uh, because w when you have a different input when you enter a loop, you might have precise the same prefix. Are you choosing to cut them down? Because you never know what happened uh, after that. Um, thanks for the question. So for loops, yes, they will like for each iteration of the loops, we consider them as one single step. Yeah. So if you have multiple round of the loops, it just has uh, been multiple round of the um, execution um, steps. So. If if it comes to execution prefix, it will be, for example, in the execution prefix, it will include, for example, how many iterations each loop has been, you know, each loop each loop has been executed. So this information has already provided a lot of semantics for this execution and can be used in the in the in the in the indication. I see. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. Um, the um, yeah, the, the choice of using the block, uh, basic block IDs mm -hmm. seems to be very oriented towards instruction, not so much data in which you're looking for overflows or something like that. Could you explain a little bit more the relationship between the, the two? Okay, so you mean why we made this choice, right? Instead of only for the, for example, we aim for the instructions instead of data? Yeah, or uh, yeah, about yeah. the so diversity all, yeah. that you would find okay. in the results. So, yeah. So first of all, we want to demonstrate this is an effective concept. So we want to try to be, you know, compatible compatible to the existing phases. And the most effective existing phases is use control flow information during phasing. So we approach it this way. And yes, we believe when you augment this approach with data flow information, it will be even more powerful. And thanks for the question. So I'm wondering, can you use this information to potentially cut off your inputs before you even execute them? So what I mean is, you have now a collection of you know, inputs that we know all are, are executing to, to prefixes that are useless. Could you potentially like learn a mapping to say, oh, it's this feature of the input is causing them to go down this path that we've already explored, and therefore I know as soon as I even generate that input again, I can just cut it off without even executing it. Did you explore that sort of connection, or are you just purely looking at control flow? Mm -hmm. A um, uh, great question. So, so what is the program semantic? What is the execution semantic of a program? So, given input, given the programs, its execution prefix has been determined, determined. And you on, the only way you need to, the only thing you need to do, you you need to find it out. So, purely look at the input. It gives you that don't that much information because it's just the textual format. The only thing you can collect is during the execution. We have thought of before. If you set our prefix length to zero, we would only start at the input, right? We don't enter into the program at all. But that is a trade-off. You will have a, like a lose a lot of information of the program itself. All right. Thank you. Thank you.